Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Dolores Tarver. I'm a licensed psychologist here in Georgia and it is once again time for the tea. Tea time with Dr. Tarver is not intended to be a substitute for therapy, but more of an opportunity to help you learn additional strategies on your journey to wellness because our goal is to be the best, well, healthiest version of ourselves that we can be. So what is the tea for today? The T is procrastination. So I don't want to. The pitfalls to procrastination. Now, if you are like me, you have mastered finding ways to avoid doing things you simply do not have a desire to complete. So I, for one, have really found that if I consolidate my condiments, that takes up that good time I could be actually using to finish a project. I mean, the ketchup isn't going to consolidate itself. So clearly I need to be taking that time to merge those two containers together. And then at that ninth hour, starting that work and saying to myself time and time again, this is what the last time that I am going to do this. Years later, still doing the same thing. So why is it that we procrastinate? Well, there are a lot of good, there's a lot of good research out uh, about procrastination and the Feeling Good Handbook, one of uh, my favorite resources because it's just got some good coping mechanisms in it and talks a lot about cognitive distortions that I reference uh, by Dr. David Burns. And then I found another resource, How to Beat Procrastination, and it actually is a chapter in motivation and learning strategies for students. And they have some good resources as well. So why do we procrastinate? Well, first of all, we have this faulty belief system that we are supposed to be excited about everything that we have to do. So we often feel like, well, clearly it's not time for me to work on it because I'm not feeling motivated or I'm just not in the mood. Another reason, when we have any kind of struggle, face any kind of challenge with this task, then we are like, mm, clearly I don't need to be working on this. I don't even want to do this. And, and this is tax season. So I know a lot of you are thinking the same thing about filing your taxes. Like, oh, it's so daunting. I got to pull all the stuff together. Even if I take it to an accountant, I still have to get all the resources together. There is also this perception that if I try and fail, that is actually much worse than me not trying at all. So one of the reasons we procrastinate is we don't want to fail. I don't want to be bad at something. And if I don't try, then I'm not going to mess it up. We also, I think, feel like if we get stressed out about something, that it's going to be more stressful if we start this project. So if I'm already overwhelmed, the last thing I want to do is start something that I perceive is going to stress me out even further. And that gets into this whole perfectionism thing. And we've talked about perfection, cannot get the words together this morning, perfectionism in previous episodes about how that is one of the major factors for us not only having negative self-talk, but also us not wanting to complete things. Because if it can't be perfect, then I don't want to submit it. And we know that there is no perfection. And so what ends up happening is I don't submit it at all. I don't do it. We are so hard on ourselves when we don't finish things or even when we don't start things. And so we don't actually celebrate even small successes along the way. So if I'm procrastinating on something, I do get a piece of it done. I still, what do I do? Beat up on myself and say, well, you didn't got all of it done or it's taking you longer to get it done than it should. And so I'm not actually rewarding myself. And we know that we are a reinforcement kind of folk. So if I'm not having any kind of re reinforcement for things that I'm doing, I'm going to be less likely to want to do them. The shoulds, right? These shoulds and oh, I ought to and why didn't I? Those show up and then we feel less motivated because we feel pulled between things that we feel obligated to do and things we want to do. And when we feel obligated, then sometimes we don't end up wanting to do things, right? There's more resistance if I feel like I have to do this thing as opposed to this is something that I'm choosing to do. And that leads to the whole not expressing our feelings about what we're going through. And so often we will engage in passive aggressive behaviors toward tasks because we're irritated 
um, frustrated. And so I'm going to take it out on this thing I don't want to do instead of me actually addressing how I'm feeling. We also have problems with assertiveness. So we take on way too much. And so we're procrastinating on things because we literally don't have time to do them. We have taken on things that we really should have said no to. And because we have that difficulty actually saying no, then now I'm overwhelmed and I have more on my plate than I can handle. So of course I'm procrastinating because how am I going to get all of these things done? And honestly, a lot of times if we're doing stuff for other people and we don't feel like there's any benefit, like I took this thing on to help you out and I really don't want to do it and I'm frustrated with you, then I'm not going to want to do this thing. What am I getting out of it? So that feeds that whole lack of interest in doing something and getting it completed as well. If we are uninterested, we are not going to want to do it. This fear of being judged, which I think feeds into the perfectionism that I mentioned earlier. We don't want people to see us as incompetent or inept or inadequate. And so if we feel like people are going to be critical of something that we do, then we're less likely to do it. And we see this when people come to visit our homes, especially moms. Moms, unfortunately, have that reputation of coming over and being really critical of those housekeeping skills. And so I'm not going to want to actually clean my house because mom is just going to come over and tell me I didn't do a good job and she doesn't know who raised me because I need to know how to clean the house better than that. Or it may be a spouse that may be telling me those things or a partner. And so I don't want to do it because I'm going to be criticized for how it wasn't done up to expectation. I think that we also are unsure sometimes about how to complete a task. So you know that if you are staring at things and you're like, Ugh, where do I even begin? you're gonna be less motivated to actually wanna begin that process. And sometimes we don't ask enough questions so we don't have information about how to complete a task. And that goes back to the assertiveness piece. We get fearful of how people are going to view us so we don't get enough information to actually be able to have all the resources and tools we need to get something done. So that means I'm, what, less likely to do it. It feels too big. And, and when things feel big to us, then we're, we get fearful of them and we don't wanna start. Low frustration tolerance, low patience, low, uh, level, low, low ability to be able to tolerate boredom. Because the truth is some tasks are very mentally draining and they take a lot of mental energy. And so if I don't have the capacity to be uncomfortable to deal with stuff that are not, that's not exciting, because what happens is we're so used to electronic things stimulating us, whether it's the TV or these shows we watch, on our, our phones or our laptops or games that we play or videos that we are not able to really just sit with things that aren't stimulating in that way, that aren't offering a constant reward. They don't have bells and whistles and commercials um, to get us to buy things and, and shop online, right? So we struggle to be able to do those daunting tasks because they're boring to us. And we're like, eh, I don't wanna do that. That doesn't sound fun at all. And another thing that happens to us is we tend to overestimate our skills and underestimate the time required to complete a task. And so I've been very guilty of that thinking, oh, I can clean my house in a couple of hours. No, I can't. I can finish some tasks in a couple of hours, but I can't complete my, clean my whole house in two hours. And so if I don't actually give myself enough time, then I'm gonna end up procrastinating because I run out of time to be able to do it. And then I have to push it off or I don't have the actual ability to do something, uh, putting things together, not my strength. And so when I sit down and try to put something together, which is something I absolutely procrastinate on because it's not my strength, then I find like, I don't, what, uh, these, these diagrams are not helpful to me. What tool is that? What, so it ends up taking all of this time. And what'll happen is I'll start it, not be able to finish it because I don't have everything that I need. And yes, I know they say this stuff comes in the box but some of those little tools are just not conducive to my weak little arms. So then I end up not finishing it and it takes longer. So what do we do about this? Like what are the effects of this that we need to kind of address? So the effects end up being increased stress, understandably so, because you know if you don't complete something and you have a deadline, that stress level shoots way up because I haven't met this deadline. Anxiety, depression, we beat ourselves up, we worry about things. When we don't get them done, they're on our mind. What is that going to do? It's going to affect our sleep. So then we've got insomnia because I'm up at night thinking I did not get that done. And when you start off your week with unfinished tasks, it's like you start off your week behind. And so you're, you're feeling like rushed because, oh, I didn't get that done. I didn't meal prep like I should have, or I didn't complete that report that I needed to complete. 
or I didn't call all those people back or I didn't submit that email. I didn't finish that project. Right. So now I'm bringing that into my new week and it's causing me all this anxiety and stress and, and depression. Financially, this can affect us as well, because often what we procrastinate on is paying our bills. So we don't end up taking care of financial uh, situations or those tickets that we've gotten and we didn't pay those fees or I didn't uh, go to that court date. So I procrastinate on these things and now it's gotten worse. So now I have additional fees that I have to deal with and possibly a warrant because I didn't show up to court when I was supposed to. So now the situation ends up growing. It gets worse. So what does that do? It affects our blood pressure. Now we're at risk for hypertension. Hypertension puts us at risk for cardiac events. Cardiac events can really affect all the systems of our body. And then we end up having problems with our digestive system. We're stressed out. So we got all this tension and pain that we're feeling. We're grinding our teeth at night. We've got headaches. Um, we're really experiencing now full body effects of this procrastination. And we tend to neglect our health when we're procrastinators. So I didn't make that dentist appointment. I didn't make that eye exam. I didn't do that yearly physical. So now I'm having additional consequences as a result of that. This is gonna show up in our relationships too. Our partners are gonna get real frustrated with us procrastinating on things, particularly when they affect them. So if they have deadlines and they need us to give them information or um, complete a task in order for them to be able to move forward and we're dragging our feet on it, they're gonna get pretty frustrated with us. And so are our kids when we're chronically late because we procrastinated and didn't finish that project that we needed to for them before school. We're supposed to bake those cookies for that bake sale. I realize we're probably not doing bake sales in the time of this coronavirus right now, but nonetheless. So I didn't finish that costume. I didn't finish um, something that I was supposed to help you with uh, because I'm the team mom and I'm supposed to be bringing the drinks or I'm the team dad and I'm supposed to be helping with bat practice. And so I don't have all the resources and so I'm showing up late and now my kids are frustrated with me. If you're in school, you'll notice this affects your academic performance, turning in things late, rushing, waiting till the ninth hour to get things done so I didn't get a chance to really proofread and look through it. Or that computer crash that inevitably happens because we waited until the last minute. Our, cho our chores pile up around us. So there's just the domino effects of all of these things happening. So how do we address these things? Because it's always important for us to, once we deal out the whole card deck about these are all the problems I have, how do I fix them? Well, I think it's really important that we start with why am I procrastinating? Because that is what's going to drive the interventions. So am I procrastinating because I'm anxious, I'm fearful, it's perfectionism in there, I have a lack of assertiveness. And so as I'm thinking about my interventions, I may wanna get into therapy to address my cognitive distortions, to learn how to be more assertive, to learn how to effectively express myself and not engage in the passive aggressive behaviors. Am I having realistic and manageable goals for this task? Maybe I'm procrastinating on it because I'm trying to accomplish something in an hour that's gonna take me five days. And so I find myself feeling very defeated every time I start because I don't feel like I'm making progress. So part of it may be I need to manage my expectations. We know that with any goal, that it's very important to break things down into small, manageable tasks, realistic things. And so one of the things you need to do is outline a plan, a plan for how I'm going to get this done. One of my good friends is always talking to me about outlines and I really, you know, never think about outlines in this way, but outlines are really helpful in terms of getting tasks done as well. An outline is just simply a list. How am I going to break these things down? How am I going to accomplish these goals? What's going to be my plan of action? So it may be that I need a deadline. I need a time frame. It may be that I need to set my clock for 15 minute intervals to get things done and see what happens is once we start, we're actually more likely to get something done. Procrastination is an avoidance tactic. And so if I'm not avoiding and I actually move, I don't have to get it all done. I just have to start it. Then once I get that momentum going, then I'm well on my way to actually being more successful in completing that task. Prioritizing is really important. What are some things I can do now so I can have something to celebrate? We again are a reinforcement based kind of folks. So if I do a small task and I can celebrate myself, then that gives me a little bit more motivation to get something else done because we are achievement oriented. I completed something. Good job. That makes me feel good. Again, we get that little bit of dopamine rush, right? Like, ooh, go me. So those kind of things can be really, really helpful.
And don't threaten yourself. Like we're, <laughs> we're so funny when we have these conversations with ourselves and we make these threats. Uh, uh, our, our kids will often say these threats are empty because you're not going to back that up, mama and daddy. Y'all ain't about to do that. You're just threatening to put me out. Uh, you know I'm not going anywhere. But we'll do the same things to ourselves. We'll threaten ourselves. We'll say these very ne negative and harsh things to ourselves. But really, it's not about making a threat. It's about positive reinforcement and small manageable goals. Finding ways to make things fun, right? So I know these tasks are boring and daunting sometimes. How can I liven them up? Can I put a little music in the background? Now, I want to be very clear that we do need to minimize distractions when we're having a hard time getting things done. Some people cannot work with music. So if that is not you, do not do that. Some people can work with sounds because they need to have something in the background so it's not so painfully quiet. But you know yourself. You're an expert on you. So what is what are you able to have in your background that's not going to be distracting? That's just going to end up being background noise to you. For some people, it can be as simple as having a fan on. We have these noise machines that sometimes can be really helpful. Um, you may end up just liking to hear sounds and vibrations, uh, nature, those kind of things. But what can you have in your background that will allow you to be able to have something to just not be so quiet? but allow you to be able to focus. Getting up and, and taking dance breaks, exercise breaks in between can really help because you get that heart rate up and then that allows you to be able to focus and attend a little bit better. And so I often will tell people when you're breaking up your task in the 15 or 30 minute intervals, if you do a little uh, boost of exercise, do you some jumping jacks, run in place, um, do a little stretching and come back, you'll find that you're much more productive. Water can be really helpful, particularly water with fruit in it. Uh, remind yourself of those negative consequences. And again, not threatening yourself, but just telling yourself like, hey, the last time this happened, here are all of the negative things that I had to deal with. So again, going back to my plan, let me give myself adequate time to begin to prep, especially if I have to get some materials and resources to be able to start so that I'm ready to go. Accountability. Tell people you're starting. You can even tell your social media that you're starting. Hey, you all, I'm starting this task. And people be like, all right, get it. They'll motivate. People can be very, very encouraging. And then you have your immediate support system who you can also go to that can have an accountability partner in there. You know, I'm a big fan of accountability partners. Having that person that'll say, okay, you working? You better be working. Um, I'm checking in on you in 15 minutes. I want to see what you have done. And then also that reward, right? That important piece, rewarding myself when I get something done to celebrate my achievements. And I don't want to have you all tie your rewards to food necessarily. Rewards can be any number of things, but let's think about what a reward might possibly look like for you. Okay, so a reward may end up being um, I do something I enjoy. Like I treat myself to a concert, I treat myself to a movie. Um, I treat myself to an episode of something. Uh, I may treat myself to um, something that I've been saving up for and I want to go ahead and purchase, right? So there's a lot of ways that you can end up having some kind of motivational thing to look forward to, okay? So what are the keys to beating procrastination? Movement, start, take that step because a person in motion is much more likely to stay in motion. And that decreases our task avoidance. You all be well.